start with the testimony that the man of God was talking. What happened? I was so busy helping people and uh, with counseling, deliverance, and uh, everything on top, and uh, releasing things. It was almost like uh, I went for three, four months with no rest. At uh, that time, particular time, I asked my wife, I said, you know what, let us go somewhere. I want to rest. And she, she loves Deben a lot. I said, no, I cannot go to Deben because there are a lot of people. I want to go to a place where people are not many. Let's go to Kruger National Park. I love Kruger National Park. Actually, every time when we want to go out, I will, will, will put places where we have to go, but we, I end up winning, not because I'm a pastor. You know, I normally say, you know what? Kruger National Park, there is this part we haven't seen. There is this, there is this. It will excite her, we'll go back again. That time, I said, I want to clear my mind. I don't want to be where people are because... The moment I'm where people are, I start working. I said, I just want to rest. And we book uh, in White River. When I arrived at the hotel, around 8, we were going to sleep. I was so tired. I, was, I just went straight to sleep. Immediately within 5, 10 minutes, I saw something black coming in, in the hotel room, coming straight to me. And it hit me on my side. I was paralyzed the whole side, same time. And the pain was severe. I said, hey, if I wake up my wife, the first thing that will come at that day, those days, she will say, let's go to the hospital. I said, no. I know the God that I serve. I went to the toilet. You know the hotel, there is no room enough. I went to the toilet and then sit at the seat. I said, Mara, Morena, what's happening? Immediately, the Holy Spirit, you want to talk to me when you are here in the toilet? I said, Eva, there is no other room. Are, you want to talk to me while you are here in the toilet? I said, I'm sorry. I went outside, closed toilet, right there. I kneeled down where the entrance of the hotel and, uh, and toilet, I kneeled down there. I said, where do I start? I'm asking myself, where do I start now? The Holy Spirit said, worship. I started worshipping. I was worshipping um, Holy Spirit, I Love You. That one, that song, Benjamin Dubin. I was worshipping. I worship. Within five minutes of worship, there was uh, the, this coldness that I feel here inside it's warm. This coldness, it came, it hit me, goes down. After that, I was no longer feeling pain. I was healed completely. Same time. Worshipping. While worshipping. Not praying. Not commanding. Worshipping. Immediately after that, I said, God. I, I, I continued to worship. Hardly did I know that there is no time in heaven. Time is here on earth only. While I was busy worshipping, we were supposed to wake up around 4. I said, let's wake up around 4 so that by 5 o'clock when the gates open at Kruger National Park, we are entering Kruger National Park. I worship until 4. Kneeling in the same spot. Not moving, not standing up. In the same spot. I didn't know I was in the same spot. I didn't know what was happening around. I worship, worship with the same song over and over again. You know the Holy Spirit loves when you tell him you love him. I worshipped. When I finished, I said, yeah, let me go and sleep now. It's time to sleep. When I check the alarm of waking up 4 o'clock, I said, ha. Huh. I said, Hi, maybe my phone is not fine. I went and checked my wife's phone exactly 4 o'clock. I said, ha. Huh. I phoned the reception. What time is, is it now? We're 4 o'clock. Do you want us to wake you up what time? But no, 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 it's fine. Thank you. I went to take a shower, my wife, and then we went to Kurgan. The whole day, I didn't fall asleep. And on the way, I was asking God, the Holy Spirit, what is happening? What happened, actually? Are what you are carrying. When you arrive here, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, they said he's here to destroy us. Let us destroy him first. Did I know about that? No. 
Was I going to destroy them? I was going for holiday. I said, God, but I'm coming for holiday. Or do you think there is a holiday on you? You are here for holiday. But the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness, they don't know that it's a holiday. They think you are coming to attack them. This is the testimony which I told him. God, uh, that's the first time I saw that as Christian, we are the carrier of his presence. You understand what I'm saying? We are the carrier of his presence. The man of God, while he was talking here, I, felt, I said, God, why do I have to preach? Because what he's saying, it's a message on its own. We're supposed to worship and then I just pray for people and go. When we are closer to the Holy Spirit, things happen. When you're a Christian, the moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit come. Immediately when the Holy Spirit come, who is this Holy Spirit? He's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. He's the same resurrection power that worked through Lazarus. The same power is on you now. Hallelujah. Do you follow what I'm saying? Today I just want to talk about some. I want to challenge you about something. I even asked for God to ask what is it that I must talk about, but I felt it's fine. We don't have to discuss what I must talk about. Uh, the Holy Spirit will just give me something. And indeed, the Holy Spirit gave me something so simple, but it's so interesting. And I believe after when I finish sharing, God will change your life forever. Did you hear what I'm saying? God will change your life forever. I'm here. I didn't come alone. Mary, you see me alone. <laughs> yes, I'm not talking about the spiritual being, the physical people there around. I have my pastors. Uh, two of my pastors. Uh, one is related to another pastor around 15 minutes away. I saw, I told him where I'm coming from. I dropped them that side. I thought, I thought I'm coming next week. <laughs> Until when he phoned me, he said, hey, photo. I bet this is weekend. I said, hey, bye. I thank God that he phoned me. If he didn't, I was not going to be here. And somehow, the pastors that side, I was not invited that side. They invited one of my pastors. I said, it's fine because they are related with them. Uh, they can go and do deliverance that side. Vadibu said that side. And when I said, you know what? They didn't have a car. They were supposed to use my car. I said, let me give you a lift. I'm going that side also. And then we went there, I dropped them and they came here. They are busy doing deliverance wherever. You cannot be under a ministry of specific men of God and you don't take what, what is happening to them. The anointing falls and it overflows. Are we together? Now, at least the men of God that side saw me. You have to come, you have to come. When are you going to come? Okay, can we wait for you? I'm going to work that side. Yeah, it's fine. I gave you Two couples who can operate like me, you will have enough. I'll just come and collect them and go. You know, I'm not alone. Unfortunately, I was going to be with some people also. My wife is preaching. I was checking now. She's preaching now. I was checking online. She's busy preaching. She said, I must greet you all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. She wanted to come. And actually, she was thinking or if she finished early, she will drive. But I said, no, just be at home because I saw somebody has to come, need help. She doesn't know, but now he's in. Somebody's going home. He, that person has to be prayed for. She will do the, the rest of the things. Today, I want to talk to you about prayer. Let me ask you this question. Who prayed this morning? Who prayed this morning? Just be honest. Aha, eh? uh -huh, just be honest. Who prayed this morning? Okay. You know what you must do every time when you wake up? The first thing is to say, Holy Spirit, I thank you for another day. We ignore these things very well. Are we together? Are you going to change from now? When you wake up, just said, it's not a privilege to wake up. There are people who are dying on a daily basis. It's not a privilege. For you to sit here, you have to thank God. For you to be worshipping here. Hey, hi, that's another. Uh, when I, st I started worshipping or thanking God, man of God, I don't know. I, I, I normally take time. Yesterday, this another boy that I stay with, he said to me, man of God, I've discovered when you started praying, I was listening. And somehow, 
It went on and on and on, but I was just hearing, you were just thanking God. God, I have a lot to thank God. For me to be talking like this, I have to thank God. To be walking, you have to thank God. To go to toilet, you have to. We ignore these things. How many people did I release when the doctor said they are gone? They are no longer going to go to toilet anyway, just in two weeks' time. I just went and reversed what the doctors have said. And to reverse, I have to reverse the mind of that person. To say, resist this. This is not yours. God didn't give us this. Hallelujah. What is prayer? We know a prayer is a communication between us and God. But one thing that we lack, this I won't touch. I want to come back again. I want to come back again. <laughs> Maybe by the way I will present the message, you will invite me. But anyway, God already has sealed. I won't talk about what is coming. I won't talk about what is coming. We normally pray a lot as Christians, but we hardly listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. When we said amen, we run. Why? We are not putting him first. I, I, I thank God about the example, the good example what the men of God said today, this morning. I wanted to have a conversation. I was having a conversation. The Holy Spirit says that. And he started. This is how it's supposed to be. When we spend three hours, four hours in prayer, it's not just asking. Asking, it doesn't take 20 minutes sometimes. Even 10 minutes. Mara, we have to spend much time thanking God. For what? For, who, for, who he, for what he has done for us. He has done a lot for you. Sometimes if he can reveal what he has done to you, that is a lot. But when we come to prayer, let me read James chapter 4. James chapter 4 verse 3, the Bible says, You ask God for something and do not receive it. Because you ask with wrong motives, out of selfishness, or with an unrighteous agenda, so that when you, go, you get what you want, you may spend it on your hedonistic desires. The other version said, and even when you ask, you do not get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Did you hear that? We don't want anything to build the kingdom. It's me, myself, and I when we go and pray. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these other things will be added. What is he talking about? The other things. Your heart desire. The things that is in your heart. Hallelujah. God is not a robber. He cannot rob you. Recently, I was praying for, I said, God, how do I pray for my enemy? God, they wronged me. I wish you can just open... <laughs> You know when you're frustrated, you can speak things. I think, you, I, I, I wish you can just open the earth and they go in and you close. God said, hi. Well, now what is it that you want to see happening to you? I said, obviously blessings growing from one place to another are what is whatsoever you want to see happening to you. Pray for them. What does that mean? Forgive because I forgive you and bless that one. When you do that, then that, that thing is like a boomerang. It was like that, the message. It's like a boomerang. When you send it out, it comes back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You understand? Now, James here is talking about or you pray and ask so that it can, you can fulfill your desires. So that you can say, yes, I have this. In some cases, it's a competition. You are lasting after others because they have this. Liwena, you want to have this. Many Christians believe in God, but we don't trust him to provide. We believe, but we don't trust him to provide. I will tell you as we go why I'm saying God loves us very much. You know, I was praying. We, we, we were nearly not come, came here. <laughs> hey! You know, while we were praying, I was praying last night. The attack I got, I coughed 
in the afternoon actually, around three afternoon while I was praying, I coughed. I don't know. My wife even was worried. But later when I came out of prayer, or what's happening? Karno, it's a family that I think it's a family that I have to go with. They're going that side. In the spiritual realm, something is not fine. Immediately, Karno, let me go and pray again. That time it was around half past five. I finished around half past five. I went back to pray again. When I went back to pray, I saw the demonic spirit strangling uh, the pastor. Also, she's a lady. Strangling her. Or she's not going to go there and deliver people there. Immediately, I just said, ah, this is nothing. I didn't pray. I said, cast out clothes. Why? I have the power and authority. I determine what happened around my environment. You got it? Anybody can claim that. You have that power. You have the authority. But do you understand that power and authority you have now? Now, I just say, Lord, nothing will happen. This morning, she's telling me, and I nearly died. This thing started this time. It was the same time. Now I just said, she's going to preach there, Lord. Thank you because you have ordained it already. I ask you, you said she must go. And she's going there. And when I check, in the spiritual realm, we have the authority. If you can be able to see two days ahead, three days ahead, hey, you can go very far. But it starts with prayer. Praying the right way. We don't just pray. If you go and look, look chapter 18, read it when you arrive at home. Look chapter 18. We, the teachings of Jesus Christ, they, I want you to understand it. I want you to understand this. But there, I'm being pushed to go. Uh, you know when, when you have prepared something and you are pushed to go over not exactly going through what you have said. It's very good. Okay, the Lord said in Numbers 14, 27 to 28, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? Who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. 28 said, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in, hear in my hearing, I will do to you. Now, when we ask God to do something that does not align with his will, he, doesn't, he does not consider that. Now, we cannot manipulate him into doing things that he's, he's, not, he's not supposed to do. Here, I've seen that many Christians, they complain when they come to God. They don't ask. They don't worship. They complain. I don't know whether you are one of them. Where you even ask God, why? For how long am I going to be in this place? In this position? Let me ask you this question. Who went to grade 12? Did you go to grade 12? Raise up your hands if you went to grade 12. Did you pass grade 12? Okay. But if you failed grade 12, what was going to happen? You were you supposed to go and repeat until you pass. Am I right? Until you pass. is the same as we are Christian. When there is a promotion, you have to pass the test first. Sometimes the test you will cry. Mara, without you passing the test, you are wasting your time. Complain to say, Mara, why me? Lord, why? Eh? Now when a person come and say, I ask God, God, why me? I ask God, are you sure? The God that I serve. You are asking, why are you? <laughs> Test, where is it supposed to go to? Eh, let me ask you. Do you know who you are in Christ Jesus? Some of you, you don't know. Do you know why you are still alive today? After Corona killed a lot of people. Eh? Do you know why? Some of you, you don't know. Why? You are ignoring the most important thing that God has created us for. And how do we get that? Through prayer. When we are fasting and pray, then we get to understand who am I? Where am I going? What is it that I'm supposed to do now? Are we together? Praying contrary to the will of God is not going to get you anything. When you pray because you lust, 
you want things to ask somebody. That is not going to work for you. Philippians 4 verse 6 said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. When people pray, he said, but in everything by prayer, prayer and supplication. Supplication, we're praying for others, obviously. Praying whatsoever you're bringing to God. But did you understand this part? With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. This is connected. It's not part of prayer. Thanksgiving is not a prayer. But it comes with prayer. Whatsoever, when you are praying, when you finish, let's say, let me give you an example. I said, Lord, I need, the, I need a car, a new car, or a new house. I need a husband. I need a wife. When you pray, you finish there. You, you don't just end there. No. We don't go there. You can tell him. But he said, let your will be done. If you have to tell him. Or yes, this is my desire. Marawena, you have the best for me. And that way it will work. But when you finish praying immediately, because you have faith, you said, Lord, I thank you that my husband is coming. I thank you I'm going to start a new car now. Faith is now. It's not tomorrow. This is what makes Christians not to receive because they postpone their blessing when they are not aware of it. They said God will do it at his own time. Let me tell you, that is not true. At his own time. There is what we call the timing of God. I can explain that so you can understand it. This is what happened. God, when he created you, he said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And because I knew you, I have a very good plan for you. My plan is to prosper you. You, you understand? My plan is to prosper you. This lady came. Actually, I knew, I knew her from Venda. If I mention her, maybe he might know, know, know her also. She came. She called me. She was in the hospital somewhere in Midrand. I went there. When I arrived, when I arrived there, it was uh, an interesting thing. She said, I'm just from operation. She was 21 years by that time. Operation, what happened? It is before even I have a church. I was just still running wild anyway by that time. Wild meaning I was running away from God. <laughs> but I was doing what God wants, but I was running away. I didn't want to, be, to do this full time. Now, when I arrived at the hospital, she said, they operate me, they took the womb. I didn't ask why. I said, but God, 21 years. Few years down the line, I don't remember how many years down the line. The Holy Spirit said, I must pray for her and I must warn her. She must play safe because she's going to have a, a son. <laughs> she was not yet married by that time. I phoned her. I said, Ella, God, I, I felt when I was praying, God said, I must tell you, you must play safe because I'm seeing a son. I, the son, I saw the son. I said, God, Mara, you know, the womb is out. God said, I have enough in my storage. The moment I said, I said, oh, I jumped. I said, I call her, Ella, play safe. I'm seeing a baby boy. It's like around one year, wearing like this. She laughed. You know, you were there. I don't work by hours there. I'm working about what God is saying. And I believe what he's saying, it will come to pass. Immediately after that, a year down the line, I'm going to meet Ren to drop my wife for they were having women's meeting, prayer in another place. That evening, she's phoning me. When she phoned me, she said, my mother is here, wanted to greet you, actually wanted to talk to you. Can you come tomorrow? I said, oh, I'm around here, Mira. I'm just dropping my wife. I can pass that now. Give me the direction. I went. When I arrived, immediately them, 
The boy, the way I saw it, the skipper, sub blue, Lee Jean, he is wearing exactly what I saw. This is the boy I saw. But yes, I don't know what happened. But the doctors, when I became pregnant, they said I have a womb. But you know very well the womb. You know very well. Marawena, what did you do? As if that one was not enough. Years down the line, I didn't even know. They didn't even invite me for a wedding. I, didn't, I was not angry about that. But years down the line, you know, in, in a dream, I'm seeing myself in the hospital delivering her child. And it was a baby girl. I'm delivering, helping her to deliver. Hey, you know, I, I, I thank God about nurses and doctors. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. Yo, they, what I've seen, what I was doing there, I said, God, I, I, I can't do this. I have to deliver, help her to deliver a baby girl. Same time I wake up, I took the phone. I said, hey, I saw a baby girl. I was helping you to deliver a baby girl. She said, yes, I just deliver a baby girl. And I saw you, you were here helping me. What is that? The same God that you serve. When, if you believe or there is nothing that is impossible. You pray believing, trusting him. There is no way out you'll stay and remain in the same position forever. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 11 verse 42. I knew that you, were all, you always hear me and listen to me. But I have said this because of the people standing around. So that they may believe that you have sent me. And that you have made me your representative. Here it is the story when Jesus is going to the tomb of Lazarus. When he arrived he didn't pray. Can you see? Why? Because he was a prayer. He was praying every time. When he, and he knows, he knew Jesus, you know God can hear me when I talk. If I can ask you, do you have, do you believe that God hears you? Some of you, you can doubt here and there. But when I pray, I don't know whether God hears. But here, it's a constant prayer. Jesus Christ every time, the life of Jesus Christ, it was a life of constant prayer. He used to retrieve by himself, go to the mountain and pray. He fasted, prayed several times. Hallelujah. And we said we are Christian. We have to follow the same example. That's why even the Bible says, continue to pray. Never stop praying. Hallelujah. Now, here Jesus, what he started, he said, I, I knew that you always hear me and listen to me. After that, he make a command. Hallelujah. This is so powerful, this. Remember, we are praying with thanksgiving. To say, Lord, I thank I need a car. And he said, Lord, I thank you. I'm going to my car now. I'm entering my car. You even vision yourself doing it. If it's issue of marriage, you saw yourself getting married. But don't, don't dream getting married to somebody you don't know. That one is not right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I bought this car that I'm driving now, I will, I will be praying to God I need a car. You know I need this type of a car. I explain why I need a car. I didn't say I need a car. I said, God, I need a car. You can see my Audi is old. Now, and it's giving me problem. And you are sending me distance, long distances. I have to go. I need a comfortable car. Secondly, the car that will help here in church. Because we are still carrying the instrument to and fro church. Car, the car that will help. Immediately, I started feeling smelling a new car. Smell, literally smelling. I'll say, yes, I'm getting into my car. By that time, I didn't know what I'm going to buy. The time I went to Toyota, I just needed a long wheelbase Toyota because of our catering and church. Somehow when I saw double cap, the Holy Spirit said, why don't you go inside the car? When I go inside the car, the salesman, do you need this one? Go, yeah, nothing, it's impossible. And what happened? I end up getting this car. Hallelujah. But I started believing that I'm going to have this car after even thanking God more. The car came. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I knew you always hear me and listen to me. Why did he say that? Because he's always closer to God. 
We have to become closer to the Holy Spirit to the point where you know five days ahead. There's a time where I don't even go out. Hey, I don't even go out. There is a time. The time, there's another time where he was calling me. It was a week, if not two, if not three weeks. Where God said, don't take any call. You'll answer only the WhatsApp and SMSs. I said, I thought it's funny. But later when I ask, hey, there was a, I tell you, a lot of people, they know I'm always on the phone. There was an attack that was supposed to come through the phone. The other time I was closed because I'm praying. The Holy Spirit said, you're not going out this week. You are not going out of your yard this week. I didn't go out because I followed the Holy Spirit. That time I have to phone him after what, three months or so. He phoned me. <laughs> when I phoned, I know the other time he said, he told me something. You are not going to run away from me. Or no matter what you do, you are not going to, I'm here to stay. You know, <laughs> every time when I think about him, I said, hey, if I don't go back to him, he's here to stay. Let me phone back. <laughs> You know, I'm not here, as I said, because we are related. I'm here because of the calling in his life. Hallelujah. Because of the calling in his life. Jesus said, I knew you always hear me. We have to come to that point where we know when we talk something. We understand Jesus is listening. God is hearing what we are saying. To the point that when you do a declaration, that thing comes to pass. Hallelujah. That thing come to pass. I'll give you another testimony not so long. John 15 verse 7. The Bible says, if you remain in me, if you abide in me, and my words remain in you, that is, if we are visually united, and my message lives in your heart, stay joined together with me. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is a blank check. Mara, do we understand the process now? The process is one thing. Remaining. What is remaining? You don't pray and go. You pray and remain in the same position. You remain closer. He said, you remain closer. Asking, talking to him. You want to know him more. When you remain closer, everything becomes fine. But what about us Christians? We visit. We visit. That thing, that, that, that thing, that thing the Holy Spirit was talking about is the one that is making people. You know this, was it recorded that thing we were saying? I don't know. If, if it was recorded, I need, if not, please write for me this thing. Or send me a voice note with the same thing. This is so interesting. Hallelujah. So powerful. That thing is the one that is making people to be crazy today. They don't want to remain. They worry. They carry the load they are not supposed to carry. You are not the carrier of the problem when. He said, bring everything to me when you are carrying it. Hey, what is it he's supposed to do? He told you what to do. Follow, learn to follow the instructions. Learn to be obedient. We become too disobedient. We just need a pastor to lay hands on us and everything has to be fine. It doesn't work that way. You come to me one-on-one, -on -one, the first thing I do, you know, I'm reminded men of God came to me the other time. The moment he enters, the moment he enters, he just kneeled down next to my chair. He came and said, no, you can sit there. straight to my chair, kneel down, raise a hand, first pray for me. Hey, man, I, 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 need, I need this anointing, I need this, just pray for me, we'll talk. I just have to follow. <laughs> I said, hey God, this is not rare. This is not rare. Mara, what is it that I've seen honoring the anointing that I have? If you're not going to honor what God has given him, you lose a lot. If you want to debate about how the ministry is run, God didn't give the vision to you. He gave the vision to him. What you need to do is to say, just tell me I'll run. But we see many Christians disobeying. They come with their own agendas, with their own vision. That's why we see chaos in churches. I hope here it's not happening that way. But I just want to, to, to tell you, honor what God has given you. 
Hallelujah. When you do that, you'll see what God is going to do for you. He said, if you remain, we have to remain. We must not visit. We must remain because when we remain, everything comes fine. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 12 said, Ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who keeps on asking, receive. And he who keeps on seeking, finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, it will be opened. This means we have to continue. Persistent It's needed. Hallelujah. You know what? The, the devil normally makes us tired. You start thanking God and praying nicely. And the heavens start open for you. The moment the heavens start open, is the devil when he sees that now you are going to receive, he brings something. It discourages you. You are no longer continuing. And what happened? He steals what already has been released for you. Now, to go and get it, you think it will be just like a, a man of God laying hands. There, now you have to go and fight. You have to know what warfare is to take that thing back. Because many Christians, already their things have been stolen by the devil. You understand? Mara, the Bible says nothing is impossible with him. And because we are with him, nothing will be impossible with us. We can claim it and receive it back. Wherever they've, they, they, they've put those things. Now, prayer is a supernatural portal through which we encounter God in a multiple spiritual dimension. I want to talk about this and then we go and pray. We go to God in three ways. To God as a father. Uh, we encounter God the father in the sacred place and the throne, uh, the throne of grace. When we go as a father, that's where we get the salvation, the comfort, and all these things. We go to God as a friend. We take our place as a friend of God when we operate as intercessors. We take her as friend. Because as a friend, God wants somebody here on earth to pray for, for other people. It's not me, myself, and I. When we open our mouth and we are going to pray, it's not say, Morena, I need this. You are supposed to say, Lord, I'm going to pray. I thank you and I know that you love me. What is it that I must pray for? But majority of the time, you will know what to pray for to start with. Are we together? Now, when we go as a friend, this is where we also get advice. We get counsel. And also you can counsel God. A quick testimony. One lady, they brought this lady. They passed hospital. They came to me. And then when they arrive, when they arrive at home, thank you God. When they arrive at home, it was so interesting this. One of the child manifest. The mother that side is gasping for air. They wanted me to pray for the mother. You know how, how things of the spirit work. The mother is gasping. The child manifest. The Holy Spirit said, deliver this one. I bet the mother is gasping. I'll deliver the child. I said, oh my God. What is happening with that one? Immediately the Holy Spirit said, actually God said, it's a judgment. God, what do you mean a judgment? Or she's dying now. No, not in my cupboard. That's what I said. I'm doing this, I'm delivering that young lady. I said, not in my cupboard. Or it's done. Anyway, it's done. When he said, amen, when you finish here, it's done. I said, you are not a God who doesn't have mercy and grace. God, if she dies, I will ask what type of a God are you? God, you are not like a human being. When. That's what I was saying. I'm busy delivering Inside, I'm battling. Immediately after that, I hear the word. Okay, I'm giving you only seven days. You said, when are you said seven? I'm giving. God, I didn't even argue. Or when did I say seven? I didn't argue because I was saying a lot of words so quickly. So quickly. And I'm believing that he will hear me. I didn't, I was not having to say, ah, oh, maybe that person. No. I believe that person will go away fine. 
You cannot come in a place where you're supposed to get deliverance and healing and you remain the same. I would get immediately after that, I finish. I went that side. When I went that side, I saw it was like, I said, oh, what's her name? They called, they told me, that when I'm getting it, on count to three, you come back to this body. You are not dying here. <laughs> you come to this body. I said, one, two, three, back. Only that. I didn't say in the name of Jesus. I didn't say, I will fuck, I will fall all. You understand? Being in the presence of God, I heard the God telling me, I'm giving her seven days. He didn't tell me how to go back and resuscitate her. Now I have to choose. I chose to call the name Kerebuyamo because you are the spirit being. You're here when I, when I come back. It's not your time to go. Come back here. Back to your body. One, two, three. Boom. She came out of the car. Gotta take her to the hospital because there were a lot of blood here. She was like having some feet nonstop. They took her to the hospital. I talked to them. Be with her like if it was Saturday. The following Sunday, we were still at home. The elder sister was at the corner. When I finished preaching, I called her. God, let me pray for you. When I want you to go home now. If you were supposed to go somewhere, leave everything. Go home now. Are, why? God, go home. There is a call that's supposed to come. That call, when it comes, you have to talk to me. The call is coming. Are, who is going to call? God, you'll hear. Go home. God, when you put your purse down, you are going to get that call. When she arrived at home, she put the purse down. When I checked the hours, exactly seven days from that Saturday, that lady passed on. She got a call. We went and buried her. But what am I saying? When you remain in him, you can command anything you want and it will happen. You understand? Because Christians, we are crying by this thing. That doesn't have power. We normally give it power and authority and that's why it's beating us. Hallelujah. We open the door for it and we end up saying, Mara, there's no more man, powerful man of God. There is no such. I honor him with his anointing. To come here, it's an honor for him. I honored him. I felt, let me honor this invitation. And the day I phoned him, I knew he <laughs> will say, I bet you have to come. When you come, I was ready. Even if Ari tomorrow come, I'm going. When you are in the presence, not visiting, you can change your situation forever. Hallelujah. We have to learn to operate in this spiritual dimension. The last one, it, I said, Father, friend, it's a judge. We come to God. God is a judge. We have to convene the court of heaven, especially when you don't understand what's happening to you. How many times you have prayed and things are not coming? Eh? Is it long? Eh? <laughs> Some is five years. You're praying for something. It's not coming. Some you went from one church to another because you want God. You think or maybe that man of God, and you, maybe you even say it this, the way I'm saying it. You think or maybe that one is powerful. Maybe... There is no man of God that I will say it's powerful. Each and all, all of us who have been given anointing in a specific way. Hallelujah. My anointing, when it combines with him, there is power. It's a dynamite, actually. Hallelujah. It's a dynamite power of God. That's why I don't, I, I don't, where I'm coming from, where I drop those ladies, I honor that man of God. I don't know him. It's for the first time I'm seeing him. I heard about him. It's for the first time. But already he's talking about, Rabbi, you have to come. You have to come. I said, we'll arrange as it goes. Are we together? Honor. Honor. When you remain, you'll understand. Now, a judge, we go and ask a question. God, what's happening? Why? The Bible says, the devil is an accuser of the saint. He goes before God holding something. It can be something from the bloodline. It can be something that you have done a long time ago. It can be something that your parents have done. And he said, God, they are praying, they are fasting, they need this. Mara, there is this, there is a sin. You cannot grant them that. God respect his word. 
Are we together? God respect his word. Because we cannot get anything until we go back and we say, Father, forgive me. You've, you'll ask a question. If it's something from the ancestors. Something that happened a long time ago. Why are you still, is it still there in you? A curse, kind of curse. Why is it there? Because there's nobody who removed it. It needs somebody who will stand with understanding and remove that curse. Mara, we pray without understanding most of the time. Hallelujah. The Bible said when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Mara, when you go and ask, or Lord, I'm convening the court of heaven. This message came last year, December. Yo, it was so tough. I was dodging to preach about courtroom in heaven for almost a month. When I started, I said, God, I don't understand. Make me to understand. I was not comfortable teaching it. Somehow, God said, you don't need to understand. Just start, open your mouth, I will lead you. I started opening my mouth. What came after that? I have to listen to myself after. Watching, listening, taking notes. Because it was not from me. After when I was done, I discovered that we have to go to the courtroom on heaven. As Christians, we are bought by the blood of Jesus. We belong to him. This means we have the right to go before him. When we go before him, the doors are open. We go, we said, we convene the court of heaven. Let the let this devil come and tell us, why is he blocking me? We ask the question, why? This is rare for Christians when we pray. We are praying for things we are not getting a breakthrough. We don't ask God or Mren, am I missing something? What is happening? That's a good question. What is happening? And that way, it helps us. It helps us to get the answer. This pastor, while he was praying, immediately after the courtroom and heaven. He said, hey, man of God. He, saw, he was doing a marathon prayer. Marathon prayer is when you pray for 20, in a 24 hours. You pray one hour, you rest two hours. You pray one hour, you rest two hours. If, for example, you start six in the evening tonight, you'll finish six evening tomorrow night. This means you pray for an hour, you rest two hours. It's called marathon prayer. When you are done with that one, you'll feel it to your hours praying. <laughs> you'll feel it to your praying. Now, immediately, you go and ask, or let the accuser come and show what is it. Why? God said, if you are a parent, you sin before me. I'll punish you. I'll punish your children to the fourth generation. You, you understand? You remember Joshua, when he's going to fight I. When he's, they, are, they said, ah, I, it's easy. Ah, yeah, we'll just deal with it. Because they won battles. Where there are many soldiers, but ah, I is a small town. There, ah, we know we are going to conquer. But the instruction that they, they didn't follow the instruction. They disobeyed God when they were from that other side. And what happened? The punishment came in a huge number. They lost a huge number of people at I. Joshua came back angry and said, God, why? Why we were winning and all of a sudden now, God, you let us down like this. God said, I didn't let you down. Somebody disobeyed me. You took things that I told you not to take. Now, somebody has to be punished. He didn't say, Kim Ket. He said, you have to find that person. Joshua now started. Twelve tribes came. He went. One tribe came out. He went on. One family came out. When that one family came out, that man said, yes, it's me. I took one, two, three. Are you okay? He sent the soldiers to his tent and they came back with those things. What happened? After that, the instruction came. All of them, they must die. Why? Because they don't want a curse to come back again. Because it's in the blood. You kill him. They're going to have another children. You know, it is the same with the curse in the bloodline. You'll think... You are in a family. They love you sometimes, but they love you when they put the face sometimes. Behind the scene, they're doing something. Where are you coming from? As we're going to pray, this lady came to church 
She's from Zimbabwe. She came with the sister the first time. On the prayer line when I pray, immediately I saw, I said, your case, we'll just talk. I want to talk to you. Went down the prayer line. I saw somebody again. When I lay hands, it's the same thing as before. I said, your case is the same as that one. Go and sit next to her. I didn't know they're sisters. When I am done, Kiri, your case are similar. Well, no, we are sisters. I'm the elder sister. This one, I think it was the last born, if I'm not mistaken. God, in your family, your mother was cursed. Was fighting with somebody, was cursed by somebody. Are your children, they are not going to get married. When they get married, within three months, the husband must die. And that's the same thing. The second thing, one member of the family must work for all of you. I bet they were four sisters and two brothers. One sister has to work for all of them. And where was he working? At the kitchen. As a domestic worker. After I prayed with them. When I finished praying with them, I said, we have to reverse what has been done. Is your mother a Christian? They said, yes, she goes to church. Okay, let's do it here. We're not, this is how you're going to pray. This is how you're going to pray. You're going back and ask for forgiveness for what your parents has done before God. You're asking for forgiveness for what your ancestors has done. Ask God to reveal more. This pastor said, when I started praying, I saw in my family bloodline, men of God. They were, they kill a lady, close to four, four if not five people, kill a lady, took that lady to the river, where there are the sacrifice. And I discovered they were very big in Nyanga, somewhere in Malawi. I said, oh, that's interesting. Gotta pray and go and ask for forgiveness. He has to ask for forgiveness. We kill people, we destroy the lives of people through Inyanga thing. After when he started praying those prayers, things started changing even in his life and his ministry. Because we normally ignore what happened a long time ago. And we just want God, you can do it. No, I'm in a new covenant. You are in a new covenant, but the blood is still the same. You understand? The blood, it's just that we cannot tell you how related we are, where is it coming from. But the, my blood is not going to change. His blood is not going to change. Even if we can fight today and we don't see eye to eye, it's not going to change. You understand? This means the consequences that is there in the bloodline, we get it together. Through our grandmother, whatsoever that's happening on our grandmother's that side, that's where we have to deal with it. On our father's side. If we are not going to deal with it, it's not going to work. You understand? That's how it works. In life, we ignore too much things that happened a long time ago. We must not be ignorant. Some of you, you know what you have done. We have to go back and ask for forgiveness. On behalf of the family, you will see what God is going to do for you. Hallelujah. You must not ignore that part of going before God and ask God. When last did you pray for our president? Ask your neighbor, when last did you pray for your president? And be honest. Say, be honest. Some of you, you haven't done for more than three years. Or maybe when the pastor said, let's pray for our president. Then you pray. You understand? Let me read here. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. First of all, I ask you to pray for everyone. For everyone. Did you hear that? For everyone. Meaning even those who are not saved. We have to pray for them. Pray for everyone. Ask God to help and bless them all. And tell God how thankful you are for each of them. Pray for kings and others in power so that we may live quiet and peaceable life as we worship and honor God. Because if you're not going to pray for government, they will close the churches. In China, if you follow the story and the news, they were destroying, they were closing churches like never in the beginning of lockdown. Yeah, 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 corona. Closing churches like never before. Arresting pastors, men and women of God, thrown in prison. There are places where it's still hostile. Here in South Africa, we're still very free. But we are not praying for our leaders. Hallelujah. We need people to be led by the Holy Spirit up there. So that we have peace. If not, they will close the churches. Hallelujah. 
That's why community halls now, they are no longer being used nicely for churches. They will say, no, 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 no. It's a community hall. You cannot be here every time. You understand? But if we pray well, these things was not going to come. Because there are pastors who cannot afford to buy a building now. We are, we, are, we are in the process of buying, but we cannot afford to say, let's put five million down now. Hallelujah. Are we, do we understand what I'm saying? God will see us through, but we need to start praying for our leaders. Self, selfish mentality has to go out. Starting with me, myself and I. We have neighbors. Some of you don't even love your neighbors. But the Bible says, love your neighbors as yourself. Pray for them. My wife one day said to me, as we're going to pray, she said, actually, she, what, what she mentioned, she said, when you'll go to heaven, God, why? Hey, now I'm striving when I have to go to heaven. That's one, it's a guarantee. I want to go to heaven. I don't know, I'm talking about this man next door. You greet him, he doesn't greet you. You said hi, you did nothing. Mara, you didn't stop. Mara, now Warner, we are, and by that time, I didn't even see him. When we are crossing over to 2021, <laughs> we thank God we are still fine. Oh, God is great. God is great. I saw him sick. I prayed for him. I believe God showed him what I'm praying for him. That I oh, no, but the grace of God, he knows the grace of God now. You understand what I'm saying? Because the Bible says we have to love. Love like the way Christ loved us. God loved us so much. He sent Jesus Christ to die for us. Hallelujah. Let us stop selfish mentality. Some of the breakthrough, they will come when you start directing the prayer to what God wants. Not what you want. You, you understand what I'm saying? Let us direct prayers to what God wants. That is called obedience. When you don't do what God has said, it's disobedience. It's the same when you don't tithe. It's disobedience. You think, uh, no, I don't get a lot of money. The Bible didn't say when you get a lot of money. Are we together? He didn't say that when you get a lot of money. Tithe, it's part and parcel of what the word of God said. I have seen the results of tithe in my life. Hallelujah. As from today, I want you to pray like you have never before. You have never prayed before. Coronavirus, I think, it has showed us one thing. I prayed when corona started. I saw it actually and I mentioned it in church. I didn't know what was it. I said, I'm seeing this thing. The churches will be closed for six months, 12 months. It's for an extended period of time. I don't know what's happening. Let's pray. Mara, it will be like we won't even travel out nicely. There will be time where we'll be locked up. I don't know whether it's violence. It's what? What's going to happen? We started praying around November. Before it started, we know this corona. We started praying. But somehow, even the day when the president was going to announce closure that Sunday evening, I told the leaders, God, we have to have a way of how we are going to deal with people. I'm seeing closure. We are no longer going to come back here for extended period. They said, no, 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 no. The president won't do it. The time it was closed, they asked for forgiveness. When you cannot see, don't compete with the men of God. You rather listen. And actually, the Bible says, test all spirits. Go if you don't trust at that particular time. Go to God. God, what are you saying? When I get a prophecy, the first thing I ask, God, is this you? That's the first thing. Is this you? In most cases, I found out it was not even God. People, they wanted to manipulate me. Because the gift that God will give you remain. Hallelujah. It doesn't go. Even if you go Watwasa, if I'm a prophet, I go Gatwasa. I will still prophesy. The gift will be there. Some, they are prophesying not because they are men and women of God. I normally say, you are the prophet of your life. You are the prophet of your family. Because the Holy Spirit speaks to any one of us. As from today, I want you to pray like never before. Ask God to accomplish his will concerning whatever situation that is currently in you. Let him accomplish his will. Your situation might be there because God wants to teach you a lesson or God wants to promote you or God wants to show you something bigger. Focus on the bigness of what is coming. 
Hallelujah. Don't focus on the problem. What I've seen, many of us, we are focusing too much on the problem. We focus too much on the problem. Ask him to provide for you, but don't tell, me, tell him how. The problem is telling me, him how. God knows how to provide you best. Tell him to promote you, but don't tell him how. Ask for, for your long-awaited spouse, but don't prescribe for him. If you heard what I said, you can tell God, I need this one, need this one. I saw another on the Facebook, Maribona. This lady, Uri, I need a tall guy like me. Mara, the father is short. Mara, the father is short. Don't tell God, tell Uri, my desire is this, but let your will be done. You do that, all is well. Hallelujah. God will answer your prayers today. Did you hear what I'm saying? God is going to answer you. What you need to do, you have to learn to listen. Lend an ear. To say, God, I did talk to you. What about you talking to me? I don't finish prayer and don't talk to God, no matter how tired am I. One last thing as we're going to pray. This other day, I was so tired. So tired. The time of prayer came. I just said, God, I need immediately when I said, Amen, I'm going to sleep. No conversation. <laughs> God said, oh, how, how, how possible is that? We are not going to talk. Remember, I don't talk only. He has to talk. He has to talk. Immediately. Because I was so tired, I said, no, 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 God. I, I said, I'm in. Now I'm checking time. 15 minutes gone. He hasn't talked. I went and slept. The moment when I arrive, sleep within five minutes, I'm hearing a tap. Immediately when I check, my wife is facing that side and is snoring. Kari is not my wife. Kari, what is this? The Holy Spirit said, Ay, why are you here? We are supposed to talk. Kari, Mara, I'm tired. Can't we postpone? Are, are, go back to your closet. I went back. When I arrived, because I was so tired, I sit down, expecting him to speak quickly. When I sit down, fall asleep. After an hour, why are you asleep? We have to talk. Karimara, it's after an hour now you are telling me, Arabet, this said there's no time. You were supposed to start conversation. I confirm what he's saying. Runa, we start conversation. That is love. God is not bossy. The Holy Spirit is not bossy. When he said start conversation, how do you start a conversation? Worship. Sometimes it's worship. Sometimes you can talk. Immediately after that, things started opening up. You know, God was talking to me. I was writing. Writing pages to pages, pages to pages. After that, do you have anything? By that time, Morocco gone. <laughs> Anything that I, I just want Morocco, I come back. I want to go and rest. But okay, it's fine. Go and sleep. One last time, I, I said, God, I'm not gonna sleep. You have to answer me on this. I need this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sleep. After that, the devil said, Ah, oh, he's God. What if he's not gonna answer? Just go and sleep. I sit down. God, I'm not gonna sleep. I'm striking today. I'm not going to sleep. I don't know what was happening to my mind when I said I'm striking today, I'm not going to. I know God, I can talk to him nicely. But I was frustrated about something. And instead of being worried, I took it to God. I said, ah, ah, what is this? I don't understand. There's a difference when I cast out demons in prayer and when I talk to God. When I talk to God, I'm down to earth. Sometimes I will be kneeling or laying prostrate, talking to God. But in most cases, I'll be standing, depending on what's happening. But when it is the devil, I cast him away. I deal with him the way he's supposed to be. Don't underestimate your prayer. The Bible says you'll reap what you sow. What is it that you are saying after prayer? What is it that you're doing after prayer? Are you doing the same thing that will bring the solution or that will increase the problem? Some people, you pray for them for healing. When they, they are healed, yeah. When they go, 
the devil knocks with the same thing. And he said, ah, I thought I'm healed. You opened the door for him. You have to believe that it's done. And it's done. Even if when the devil is bringing it, believe it's done. And it will be done. We serve the God who is always there. He's ready. The Holy Spirit is ready to communicate with us. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Go and invite him. And have this, uh, when he comes and envelopes you, when you are so tired and he envelopes you. It's so nice. I remember that day. Every time when he comes and like that, I'll say, I need more. I need more. There is no way out when you have that experience. You won't need more. Hallelujah. You will need more. The more it comes, the more things happen. When I arrive at place, as you had by my first testimony, I take over the place. Not because I arrived at Now I take over in the name of Jesus. Eh, eh. No. When I, was, I went to Deben the other time, one, two of my intercessors phoned me. They said, man of God, we can see that you are in Deben. You are in KZ10. I said, no, 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 pray for me. I'm going in two weeks' time. But, ah, we can see your angels, have a, they are destroying the altars corner to corner. And I was going there for assignment. That one I know, that trip. It was not a holiday. My wife thought it's a holiday. <laughs> but I told her after, on the last day, because I didn't want to scare her. Because I said, God gave her the, all the corners where we're supposed to go. She said, there is a shop here. There is a shop. How she knows, I won't tell you. There's a shop here at this corner. There is this and this and this. Got ahead. Ahead. Now I'll drive. I'm on my mission. They saw me two weeks before. What does this mean? When we are going to places, it can be work everywhere. The angels go before us. They prepare a way for us. Hallelujah. When you arrive in the place, already the place has been prepared for us as Christians. Can we please stand up as we are going to pray? What is it that you want to see happening in your life? What was happening in your life for such a long time? Things have to change. I want you to open your mouth and ask God. And he said, God, open my spiritual eyes. I want to see. Open my spiritual ears. I want to hear. Open my spiritual eyes. Yes, I want to hear. This situation, where is it coming from? Why am I in this situation? Things have to change upon my life. Learn to pray more. And especially if you are having somebody, staying with somebody, say that you're married, learn to pray in what we call prayer of agreement. My wife, where she is, it's a product of prayer of agreement. What do I mean? There is another time where she was attacked. She got, her lungs were full of water. The doctors, when they arrive there, they have to take her to theater, took out the, drain the water. When she came out of theater, the lungs, both lungs collapsed. They called me. They said, you know what? If you believe an Inyanga, call, go to the biggest one. You believe in whatsoever prayer, go and pray the way you're supposed to pray. If you believe in men or women of God who can do this for you, get that person. I said, why? Are it's 50-50. Now it's only machines that are working. And we cannot allow this to happen for more than seven days. I said, ah, don't worry. I was not even shaken. <laughs> why? The one who is in me, it's greater than the one that is in the world. I was not shaken. I went and called these two men of God. That way, I was staying in Almafias by that time. Call, Kirk, hey, come, I'm busy. Can we go? Uh, today, my wife is in hospital just to pray for her. But okay, I didn't even tell them what's happening. When we arrived, we said, Can, I'm coming to see my wife. But no, only two. Kari, we won't take five minutes. We just want to pray. But not a problem. We hold hands. Kari, can you see? A lot of machines. That way, scary. But I was not scared. I said, no, we are praying to... The lungs has to start operating. If they are old, they have to come out. New ones have to come. Let's hold it. But, oh, okay. Within three minutes, we are done. We went home. The following day when I arrived, my wife was making noise. Go, I see you. 
Sweetie, Bona. Why not get around like I see you? I just look at it. Hey, this God. Hey, that I said. Not to me, I was just saying, hey, this God. Second time it happened. I even took the pictures of everything so that she can see. I went with one person <laughs> because I know oh, this is the trick of the devil. After that, that is the time where I went and asked God, God, open the heaven for me. Let me know what's happening. I want to know why. I discovered the roots. Radilana Little. It was all about name. Her name. She has to change the names. Because after that, the demons were manifesting. Just give us our name. We'll live it. Just give us our name. She has to go and change her names. The day she changed her, na her names, all was well. What is your name? What is the meaning of that name? It matters. In the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is another lady called Kidivoni. She's a pastor anyway. The pastor I'm talking about is ministering that side now. Actually, the husband and the wife, they're pastors, both of them. She came. She was Kidivoni. Things that were happening to her. Cho. Until I just said, when are you here, the, the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to say much. Do that which the Holy Spirit is saying. If not, things are not going to be fine. She went and changed her name. Now all is well. Hallelujah. Tis some we keep the name because we say, you are the one living now. If you get the name from an Inyanga, those spirits come. They want you to be Inyanga. That's why you find some of you because of the name you're carrying. I want us to go and pray. Ask God. Ask God. Ask God. Why my situation is in this? Why am I in this situation? Just ask him that. I want to know. Open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual ears. I want to hear. I want to see. Is it from the bloodline? Is it what I have done? Is it a curse from somebody? Because if there is an evil covenant in your bloodline, that covenant has to be broken. You have to come out of that covenant and everything will be fine. Hallelujah. That headache that you normally feel every time, that is not a normal headache. I'm talking to somebody now. That is not a normal headache. There is a root cause. We need to find it today. I don't know who this person I'm talking about because the headache came and hit me here. You have to find out who, where is this thing coming from? On the right arm around this area, on and off pain. You have to find out. Because when you find out, everything becomes well. Now, if you, re, you, you go to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel, when he started prayer, he said, I understood what was written back. Did you hear that? I understood. He first, he didn't just start praying. He understood the prophecies that were made to the nation. What was coming which was not good for more than 70 years of desolation. He said, I have to deal with this thing in prayer. We normally pray without understanding. That doesn't bring results. We have to have understanding. Why are you praying? Then everything will be fine. It's the same as I deliver you today. If you are not going to remain in prayer, those things, they will come back seven times. We have to remain in prayer no matter what. Hallelujah. Actually, when you feel you're weak, you'll be strengthened in prayer. Not running away from prayer. Don't run away from God. Run to God. Hallelujah. Can we please open our mouth and just pray? Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your message, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we have to pray. We have to ask. We have to continue to ask. And it will be given to us. We have to seek and continue to seek. And we shall find. We have to knock and continue to knock. And it shall be opened for us. 
You are God Almighty. Father, open our spiritual eyes so that we understand what's happening with our situation. Our situation has to go down. Whatsoever that is not from you, Father, it has to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, open their spiritual eyes, O God. Open their spiritual ears, O God. Father, let them understand before they pray. Let them understand what they are dealing with, O God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, everything that is holding them, Papa, in the mighty name of Jesus, I destroy it right now. I destroy that thing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are God Almighty. Who never change. We thank you, Father. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Help us to, to know, mighty God. The change that is coming. The change is coming upon our lives. You are God who never end. You are God who is always there. Father, any opportunity we have missed, by your mercy, please bring it back, oh God. Please bring it back, oh God. Heavenly Father, I ask whatever door you open for us, Give us, mighty God, the needed strength to utilize it to the fullest in the mighty name of Jesus. That door of greatness, O oh God. That door of joy, mighty God. That door of testimonies, O oh God. That door of power will no more be shut against us in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal yourself to us, mighty God. We surrender. We surrender. There is no one else like you, Lord. And there will be no one else like you. You deserve all the praise, oh God. You deserve all the worship. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Before I lay hands and call specific people, I feel there is this person. Let me start with this. There is this thing. Your hands... You are feeling every time they are itching. And when they are itching like that, uh, you are supposed to receive something, but somehow there is a blockage. Mara, they itch. Sometimes they it's pain. It's like pins uh, are coming. Who is this person? It's like pins. Who is this? Come here, mama. Come, come here. Come here. I want to pray for you. I want to. There are pins. Sometimes it's like pins. If you are here, I, I will call others as it goes. If you, I will pray for all of you. It's not a problem. You got it. I'll lay hands on you. Just lay hands. Expect something from God. Expect something. Expect something. Do you, do you expect something? Expect something from God. If you expect something, you'll receive something. I normally tell people, when you go to a, a church, expect something. It doesn't matter who. Don't become used to your pastor. I tell people in my church, I said, when you come here, every Sunday when you come, don't be used to me. Come expecting something from God. When you expect something from God, you'll get something. You, you understand what I'm saying? You'll get something. As I close, as I close, I want to pray for if you are here and you don't know Christ, you said, I don't know Christ or if I backslid and I want to first start there. If you said, who is there? You said, I don't know Jesus, but I need Jesus. What I was saying, it's not going to work if you, are not, you didn't surrender fully to Jesus. I want to start with that. I want to pray. Uh, I'm not seeing any hand, but I want to pray with those online. If you said you, 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 you don't know Jesus or you want to come back to Jesus, I want you to pray with me. Can we please help them to pray with them? Say, dear Lord Jesus... Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins. You died for my sins and rose from the dead. 
I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my life, to come into my heart. As from today, I will work for you. I will live for you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have done this for the first time online, I want you to get the emails, the WhatsApp, send them to tell them I've received Christ as my Lord and Savior. They will help you. They will counsel you. Uh, they will help you how to grow uh, as a Christian. May God bless you as you do that. Now, I want to pray for you guys now. Hallelujah. I'm not going to take time unless when now you delay me. <laughs> I'm not going to take time. Uh, I want to, there is somebody, you, you, your chest, you were having this chest pain. It was on and off. I don't know now you are feeling it now, but it was on and off, on and off where you were suspecting. It's either, uh, remember we are online also. If I'm talking something and you are online, you have the same thing. Please send a WhatsApp, SMS, uh, but the prayer that I'm going to do, it will touch you no matter where you are. Let me give you a testimony online so that you understand what I'm talking about. I was just teaching the word, not praying, teaching the word. And immediately, immediately, while I'm teaching, there is somebody from India who was so sick, started vomiting, started vomiting. And they said they stopped listening. And actually, he was so sick for such a long time. And after, after a while, that person actually sent me a WhatsApp a, a email. And said, I was listening to your message. I started vomiting. I was so sick. Immediately, I went to sleep. After when I wake up around after six in the evening, I listen again to the message, the full message. And now while I'm talking to you, I'm healed. It, it happened to the same person, to another person in Asia. It happened in South Africa to somebody in Northern Cape also. All exactly the same way. I'm saying online. It's not issue of distance. Distance is not a barrier. The God that we serve, Hana distance. As I'm speaking, you'll find God will touch you and change your life. Now, somebody with chest, you were having these chest pains, for it's on and off, on and off. I don't know whether that person is here now. Raise up your hand if you're here. If you're here, it may be. But I need, I need that confirmation because God cannot just speak this thing. I need that confirmation. Send us SMS, WhatsApp so that we know. But I'm going to pray. When I pray for, for others, I'll pray for you because that thing is going forever. That thing is going forever. It's not what the doctors are saying. This is a spiritual attack. I release you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm going to pray for you guys now. You know, God is good. God is good. God is good. Mama, raise up your hands. Raise up your hands more. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Change everything, Lord. Change everything. Change everything. Those things must come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out. Can you, see, can you see what happened? It's not all about me touching you. <laughs> Some of the people, we touch them because they believe when we touch them, things become fine. Hallelujah. It's not all about me touching you. You had the testimonies that I was telling you. Those pains, they must go. Those pains, they must go. Now. 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 I break those evil altars. Now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Those pains. Uh -huh. Those things must go. Must go. Must go. Must go. You demonic spirit, live. Are right, live. Live You live Live In the mighty name of Jesus. There's somebody waist on your waist. I'm feeling it starting from at the back, coming this side. It's on a weight, but it's affect your spinal cord. I don't know where that person is. Are you here? Or is it online also? I need this confirmation. I need this. 
Come stand here also. Stand. Raise up your hands. Raise up your hands and receive your healing. Receive your deliverance now. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 The headache must go. That headache must go. I don't know who is having the headache. But the headache must go. Can we play that song? Worship team, please help me. Mama, come this side. Come out, come out. In the mighty name of Jesus. If, if you are not fine, you are sick in your body, I want you to come. But all of you, I'll pray for you. Let me start with those who are sick. And then immediately after that, uh, you, you, they can come. You come. I want to pray for you quickly. Online, uh, I want to pray for you online right now before I start here. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, whosoever mighty God is watching, Father, if they are sick, I command healing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command healing from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Be healed completely in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.